This is a remarkable book. It contains some of the best evidence-based learning techniques. It gives advice on how to overcome procrastination, how to be more productive, how to manage your time better, and how to take better notes. And it does it in about 400 pages. I only discovered it recently. I found it completely by chance. And I think it's fantastic. It's like someone's taken the YouTube channels of, I don't know, Elizabeth Phillips, Ali Abdul, Cajun Coy, squeeze them all together until just the best bits come out and distill all of that into a book. And of course, there are no ads either. By the way, this video is sponsored by Brilliant. More on that later. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the book. I'm gonna show you why I like it, show you why you might like it. And then I'm gonna give you five actionable tips from the book. And I know what you're thinking. That's very nice of you. Why would you do a thing like that? Well, it's a ploy to keep you watching until the end. But the interesting thing is that even though you know this is a ploy, you'll want to see number one. The book's philosophy is summed up really well by this quote on page 24. You don't have to be clever. When you consider these study skills components, it's clear that good study skills have little to do with being naturally clever. They owe much more to awareness, strategies, confidence and practice, leading to an overall development in your learning. And what I like about this book is the number of different areas that it covers. So if you've watched this channel before, you will know that I have recommended this book, Make It Stick, and this one, Uncommon Sense Teaching. And these both cover learning techniques. But this book has so much more. It covers learning techniques, not in as much detail as these ones, but it covers them, but it, there's so much more as well. I found it as a recommendation on the study skills pages of the Oxford University website and they know their stuff at Oxford. Let's take a look and see what it covers. Now there is so much stuff in this book that I can't possibly show you everything. We'd be here for hours, but I can try to give you a snapshot of its style and its content. Success as a student, gaining the most from your course, employability and preparing for your future, successful study. Now this is a really good chapter. We'll take a closer look at this in a second. The Cream Strategy for Learning. This is also an excellent chapter and you'll see some more from it soon. Time management as a student, managing stress and well-being. So that's the first part. There are 11 chapters in the second part of the book, including ones on critical thinking, writing essays, exam strategy and memory. And if we turn to chapter one, just the first piece of advice is really good. Take charge, plan how you will use your time as a student to gain your broader life and career aims. Don't wait to be told, find out. Don't wait to be asked, do it. Don't wait to be inspired, inspire yourself. Don't wait for opportunities, create them. Don't rely on feedback from others, learn to make sound evaluations of your work and don't neglect your well-being, including it in your goals. So here's a closer look at chapter four, successful study. It covers what is intelligence and then it contrasts that with what is is learning and then it looks at the conditions for learning and at the end of the chapter it tells you about optimal learning strategies. That prepares very nicely for chapter five which then gives more strategies so it's the cream strategy for learning creative reflective effective active and motivated and this chapter is all about showing the difference between I think really learning and memorization so there's creative learning creative problem solving and all of these strategies are designed to get you thinking about a particular subject in a much deeper way so that you learn it much more effectively. And then at the end, it talks about active learning. And of course, active learning is far more effective and it gives examples of what active learning is and compares that with inactive learning strategies. So who's the book for? Well, it says that it's for people that have just started university, but I think anyone over the age of about 16 that's interested in learning and learning about learning, learning new learning techniques, uh, who wants to improve productivity, reduce procrastination, uh, improve time management, that kind of thing. I think it would suit them. How much does the book cost? It costs, uh, well, I paid £16 for it, which is about $20. I mean, my advice, as always, would be to get it in a library if you can. You've seen enough of it now to know whether or not you are kind of interested in it. And now I'm going to give you the five tips, the ones, you know, that I promised you earlier on. Number five, time management. Use a prioritised to-do list. Write down all the tasks for the day, rank them by importance and deadline, and focus on completing tasks in order of priority. Four, 
procrastination. Break tasks into smaller steps. Identify a large task you're procrastinating on, break it down into smaller, more manageable steps, and start with the first small step to build momentum. Reading. Read interactively. Think about what you're reading. Question it. Set questions to focus and guide your reading. Challenge the assumptions of the writer, the logic of the arguments, and the validity of the conclusions. This way you'll be an active reader and you'll retain the information better. 2. Note-taking. Jot down questions, then note the answers to these as you read. Identify and sum up the main ideas of the passage. Jot down a summary or explanation of what you read in your own words. Note exactly where information comes from, the source and the page number. What is active learning? Um, well, it's kind of an umbrella term for lots of different learning techniques, but they all have one thing in common. Hold on, I've wrapped the microphone wire around my leg. Um, and that is curiosity. So you're not just trying to remember the words that are written on the page. You are reading those and constantly thinking and asking questions. How does this link to what I already know? Does it give me any new insight? You need to reflect. Writing a learning journal can be incredibly useful too. And frequently write things down, summarize them without looking at the books and try to write a little essay on what you've learned and how that fits in with what you already know. So here's a question for you. Do you want to become better at learning, at thinking, at problem solving? And are you interested in STEM subjects like math, data science and science? then I think you're going to love Brilliant.org, the sponsor of this video. Brilliant knows how to harness the power of your brain. It's where you learn by doing with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. The experts at Brilliant have created a learning platform designed to optimize your learning. It's done by getting you to solve problems, which is the most effective way to learn. Six times more effective than watching videos. Brilliant teaches you to think. You develop critical thinking and problem solving skills. You're not just memorizing. The way the lessons are designed makes it very easy to build a powerful daily learning habit. I like this one, How LLMs Work. It's an immersive AI workshop where you'll experience the mechanics of today's most advanced tools. You'll explore how real language models work, how they build vocabulary and choose their next word. You'll understand the importance of training data by comparing models trained on Taylor Swift lyrics to models trained on a cookbook or big text terms and conditions. I've learned so much from Brilliant. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for 30 days, go to brilliant.org forward slash Python programmer, or just click on the link in the description, or just scan the QR code, and you'll get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. 